kanilang tugtugin, tiyak na tayo ay mapapasabay dahil hawak nila ay mga instrumentong tila may magical sounds. Mula pagkabata, ito na raw ang kanilang naging paboritong libangan at hanggang ngayon ay patuloy na kinagigiliwan. Magandang gabi, ako po si Carla Lizardo at ito ang Personage. Mga karanasan na kapupulutan Mahalagang aras sa tinak na daan Kwento ng tagumpay at mga inspirasyon Pangarap niya noon na makarating sa iba't ibang lugar ay kanyang naisakatuparan. Bit-bit ang paborito niyang violin ay nakatapak siya sa entablado ng iba't ibang tanghalan. Pero hindi naging madali para kay Chona Noble ang buhay na pinagdaanan bago marating ang inaasam na tagumpay. Kung anong itinanim, ay siya ang aanihin. So kailangan mag-practice ka na mag-practice and then magbubuo ngayon. Bata pa lamang ay hilig na ni Chona na tumugtog ng violin, kaya matapos ang pag-aaral sa kolehiyo ay kanyang pinagpatuloy ang pagiging musikero. Kasi at the age of eight, nung ako'y nagpa-practice, bigla na lang akong nag-vibrato sa aking pagpa-practice. So yung vibrato, yun yung nagpapakanta ng music. So takantaka ako bakit bigla siyang lumabas sa akin. E wala namang nagtuturo. So naisip ko, Siguro talagang may talent ako sa pag-aaral ng violin. At the age of 12, nag-join na ako sa isang competition ang, sa CCP yun. Ginawa siya sa Little Theater, uh, yun yung NAMSIA, National Music Competition for Young Artists. So sa ganong edad, ay sumali na ako sa competition. Sa loob ng ilang dekada ay marami na rin pagkilala ang kanyang natanggap. Nagkaroon talaga ako ng proper training. So bago ako, uh, talagang mayroon akong teacher. Ang una kong naging teacher ay si Mr. Deogracia Santana. Siya din yung unang naging teacher ni Miss Carmen C. Talosada. Siya yung uh, Filipino violinist natin na nasa Germany. Napakagaling niyang violinista. Yun din ang naging teacher niya. And after nun, namatay na siya nung uh, at the age of siguro 12 ako, namatay na siya. Ang sumunod ko naging teacher ay si Professor Lisalina Beneventura. Siya naman ang naging asawa ng ating uh, national artist na si Colonel Antonino Beneventura. And pagkatapos ni Ma'am Lozada, uh, ni Carmen Sita, ay si Professor Sergio Esmiliana. Siya na talaga yung naghubog sa akin hanggang sa gumaling ako na pagtugtog. Sa pagbabalik ng personage. Napakalaking bagay sa isang teacher na tumutugtog ka sa isang orchestra. Para sa akin, sa isang batang gustong mag-aral ng violin, maganda yung teacher niya, eh nakikita niya rin nagpe-perform. So dito naman sa aming eskwelahan, eh talagang pinipost nila kaming mag-perform.
Dahil sa kahusayan sa pagtugtog ng violin, maraming oportunidad ang dumating kay Chona kabilang na dito ang pagkakataong makapag-perform sa ibang panig ng mundo. Siguro masasabi ko, halos lahat is memorable kasi iba-iba naman yung tinutugtog mo. Pero ang, ang mga memorable is yung makatrabaho mo yung magagaling na artist. Um, Siyempre dito sa Pilipinas, ang makatrabaho mo si uh, Miss Cecil Likad isang world-class pianist. Eh, napakalaking karangalan nun. Ganon din yung isa ating magaling na violinist, si Gil Lopez Cabayao. Nakatrabaho ko rin at nakatugtugan si Maestro Ryan Kebiab. Kilala natin siya. Uh, Miss Lea Salonga. Nakatrabaho ko rin po at nakasama ang ating dating national artist na si uh, Professor or Maestro Lucia San Pedro. Siya ang gumawa ng sikat na ugoy ng duyan. Maliban sa pagiging membro ng ABS-CBN Philharmonic Orchestra, ay isa ring guro sa College of Music si Chona. Uh, mapalad ako kasi itong sa edad ko na ito, eh, nagkaroon pa ako ng chance na mapasama dito sa ABS-CBN Philharmonic Orchestra. Napakalaking bagay sa isang teacher na tumutugtog ka sa isang orchestra. Para sa akin, sa isang batang gustong mag-aral ng violin, maganda yung teacher niya, eh nakikita niya rin nagpe-perform. So dito naman sa aming eskwelahan, eh talagang pinupost nila kaming mag-perform. Pero yung maging member ka ng orchestra is everyday rehearsal yun eh. So meron kaming mga concert. So pag nagturo ako, fit ako sa pagtuturo kasi everyday ako nakakapag-rehearse, nahawa ko yung violin ko. So napakalaking bagay na nasa isa akong orchestra. Ako, pag nagtuturo, ang turing ko talaga sa mga bata ay eh, para kong mga anak. Um, pag sila napunta sa akin, talagang ang pinaplano ko sa buhay nila ay makatapos ng pag-aaral. So, ang binibigay ko sa kanilang laging paalala ay time is gold. Dahil ang panahon o oras na dumaan ay hindi na babalik. So, kailangan sulitin nila kung ano yung pwede nilang magawa sa araw-araw. At isa pa dito yung kung anong itinanim, ay eh, siya ang kaanihin. So, kailangan mag-practice ka na mag-practice and then magbubuo ngayon. Doon sa mga gustong matuto ng mag-aral ng violin, maganda, bata pa lang masimulan na nila. At sana din, kung sino yung, man, yung mga bata na yon, eh, ma, ano ng parents, yung encourage talaga nila. Kasi may mga estudyante ako na nangihinayang sila, parang sana noon pa ako nag-start. Pero dahil nga sa kahirapan din siguro, wala pang pang-enroll, kasi medyo mahal din siya. Uh, yun yung pinagsisisihan nila, sana nagsimula pa ako na maaga. So, dun sa mga batang gusto or nakikita ng magulang na may talent ang anak nila, i-expose nila, nila agad ang anak nila. And then, kung magawa ng paraan, maihanap nilang ng mahusay na teacher. Kasi importante ang basic. So, hamaganap din sila ng magandang school na pwedeng gumaling yung anak nila. Even though you have so much talent, if you don't use it properly, the talent becomes overrated. Pinatunayan ng sarili sa mga international piano competitions, kinilala hindi lamang sa Pilipinas kundi sa iba pang panig ng mundo. Pero ang pinakamahalaga raw sa karyer ni Giovanni Emanuel Cruz ay ang pagbabahagi ng sariling kakayahan sa mga kabataang nangangarap din na maging mahusay na musicians. If you're gonna get into music, you have to keep that in mind. How will music impact society? How will it transform life?
you tell us about your beginnings? Like, when was the first time you played the piano? My mother was a pianist, uh, and my her mother was the first female conductor in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, and so, my mother had uh, ten children. I'm the tenth, and she started teaching all of us piano. None of the nine <laughs> before me actually uh, continued on, and and uh, I was the only one that took it as a career. So she started me out by listening to a lot of, of uh, recordings at that time, reel to reel and, and uh, 78s and 33 and a third, you know, the vinyl records. Um, and um, I would identify the composers of, of the music that I, I, I would hear. Um, and uh, she started me around two and a half, three years old and uh, uh, she discovered that I had perfect pitch so every time that she would play a note I would identify that note uh, without looking at, at the at the keyboard or, or or when I just hear something like that and so she really made it her career <laughs> to teach me every day uh, run after me around the house uh, just to get me to practice 30 minutes a day um, and um, it was it was something that I felt, um, I felt I was forced because, you know, she was there every day. I, I would not see her every week like a normal piano teacher, um, but I'm glad she did um, force me. Force in a very loving way, I guess. So would you say that your mom being in the same field was a big push for you because you could see that pursuing playing the piano could actually be a career. She really had also the foresight that, you know, uh, I was not just going to be a, a performer. I was going to be a teacher, you know. So I learned a lot from her how to teach because, you know, she really had so much patience. She's probably the most patient person I ever met. I mean, to deal with me <laughs> and to deal with my dad <laughs> and my other nine siblings, she, she must have had some extreme patience. I never really did uh, have that desire or that, that dream to become a concert artist. Um, I was just basically fulfilling uh, what I was born to do. And uh, because even though you have so much talent, if you don't uh, use it properly, the talent becomes overrated. And I was blessed because I had good teachers and uh, I worked hard on the talent. Um, so that's basically the formula of becoming artistically successful is, is you have the talent, you use it and you have good guidance. Playing the, playing the piano as a, as a career uh, is a wonderful career, but now I approach music very differently because for me now, as a performer before, uh, you know, we would you would always work hard, practice, and, and play a concert, and then you get a standing ovation. And you, you know, people, people will talk about it maybe overnight or, or the next morning at breakfast. And uh, they will say, oh, how about that concert last night? You know, it was something else, right? Uh, and then they go on with their lives, and um, um, 20 years later, maybe they'll remember uh, there was a Filipino that came here 20 years ago. You know, how, how you know, remember him? <laughs> you know, so uh, before that used to be such a, such a great exhilarate, exhilarating feeling that, you know, you would, you would play a concert and that is the result of your hard work. But now I'm thinking, how is that making an impact on society? How am I contributing to society? How am I um, helping uh, my country? Sa pagbabalik ng personage. And the only way to, to create a very, very secure, solid foundation uh, in music is through the discipline of classical music.
let's talk about Ang Mission. How did it start? Um, what was the motivation behind this movement? We basically auditioned a hundred kids to form the Orchestra of the Filipino Youth. And we asked them, they were from those little bandas and those little ensembles from different parts uh, that exist. And we actually are doing now the new vision of Jose Antonio Abreu uh, because what he did was he went from one community to another and it took him 20 plus years and, and, and really chose the best out of those communities after he had gone to I don't know how many communities and then eventually formed Simon Bolivar. Now his new vision, he says, no, it should be the other way around. It should be that the model is set so that it could cascade to the different communities eventually and form the satellites. That's exactly what Ang Mission is doing. Um, because our dream and our goal is that in every community, uh, there will be a youth orchestra. Uh, hopefully we will see it in, in my lifetime. And um, if you have all of that kind of communities all over the country, this country will be known for, for being an artistic and musical country, you know. We already are, actually. And the only way to, ha to create a very, very secure, solid foundation uh, in music is through the discipline of classical music. But I don't think the dream will be fulfilled until the very last day, the very last hour of my breath. <laughs> because I think that uh, the only time that I would be fulfilled is when the country is known for being a musical country, an artistic country. We need to put that in the cultural map because it's, a, it's already obvious. It's, it's so obvious uh, that, that a lot of people consider Filipinos to be naturally gifted with music. Like what I said earlier, Talent is overrated if you don't use that talent. And all we're trying to do is that we're, we're making sure that the talents that we see in this country will not go to waste. For people who want to pursue a musical career, for the kids who want to take up an instrument, what would your advice be for them? If you're gonna get into music, it has to be for the right reasons. It's not there to make you money, <laughs> you know? It is there to enrich your soul. It can transform your life, uh, really. The, even just the discipline of it changes you even in, when you're working on another career. That's why uh, even if one half of the orchestra decides not to take up music uh, as their career, at least we were able to instill music in their discipline because it requires so much it requires focus, it requires organization, uh, it requires a sense of camaraderie, you know. Um, it has a social responsibility because it, it unites people and it gives people more peace of mind. You know, it, it really, it heals souls, basically. And so if, if you're gonna get into music, you have to keep that in mind. How will music impact society? How will it transform lives? How will it, how will your performance or, or your career make a difference? Ang musika ay nagbibigay kulay sa ating buhay. Tinig ng kultura na dapat din nating pangalagaan tulad ng pagmamalasakit ni Nachona at Giovanni sa mundong kanilang kinamulatan. Hanggang sa muli itong programa na gatid ng mga kwento ng tagumpay, inspirasyon at pagbangon. Ako po si Carla Lazardo at ito ang Personage. Isang kavite sa mga tinuturing na bayan ng mga bayani. Mula noon hanggang ngayon sa modernong panahon ay pinatunayan niya ng ating mga kababayang kapitenyo. 2009 nang kilalanin siyang CNN Hero of the Year dahil sa kanyang proyekto na pushcart classroom. Natatawang tayong bayani because uh, selflessly uh, up to the last ano, drop ng energy na meron tayo na ibibigay natin yun para hindi para sa sarili. Buhunan natin yung kapakanan ng iba, higit sa kapakanan ng at matapos ang tatlong taon, ay muling nagbunyi ang mga Pilipino sa pagkapanalo ng Batang Kapitenyo sa International Children's Peace Prize. Actually, itong pong award nito, 
para po sa mga batang kali po na nirepresent ko po para din sa mga hindi sa mga sa mga taong uh, nung mahal po sa akin and para din po sa mga sa mga sa, sa, sa team ko po mismo po and, and kung wala po sila hindi ko po ito mararating kung ano po yun at kung ano po ako ngayon.